Hi, ng 7 m Hello, radio nerds and YouTubers. Um, I've been making a series of videos just on some repairs I was doing on my DB-18, separate DB-18. I thought I'd do just a quick series on how I go about putting on a PL-259 on good quality coax. So um, just quickly, good stripper. It comes in handy. I mean, you can do it with a utility knife. Utility knife works as well, too. Um, I really like this, which you'll see later, to hold on to the coax when I screw on the connector. I also like from DX Engineering the uh, these glued heat shrink tubes. I, I, maybe you can buy this in bulk and then just cut it, but it's got glue on the inside, and you'll see that later. So I got that on. And this part is critical, in my opinion. Do not ever use crap from a ham fest, you know, as far as crap connectors. Go with, um, you know, an Amphenol, good quality Amphenol PL259. In this case, I'm using a uh, 083-1SP, and it actually has the nickel barrel. Um, I think there's, you know, it's got the silver body and the uh, ceramic insulator, but trust me, don't use crappy connectors. Um, I mean, you'll hear that a lot from guys. So anyway, uh, you know, I've got the, you know, don't forget to put this on. <laughs> and so then I'll, I'll, I'm a one man show here, so I can't video this while I'm doing it, but I'll, I'll kind of go in steps. So I've already cut off, you know, plenty of the coax clean. This is actually solid center conductor, like a solid LMR 400 type of coax. And the other critical thing do not go with crappy solder. <laughs> I mean, you can buy a roll of crappy Chinese solder, or you can buy Kester, and the you know, uh, you know, something like this might cost you 25 bucks or 30 bucks. But believe me now and hear me later, it's worth it. And um, flux too. You can get this paste flux on Amazon. You can get the syringe, and then you can get a whole big old um, you know bulk. Thing and you'll refill this and it'll last a lifetime. Lifetime. So this will come in handy. You'll, you'll see how I put it on the braid and before I screw on the, you know, the connector down onto the coax. So really handy one of these syringes. Just, I mean, I use it all the time in the shack um, out here, right? So I think. Oh, oh. Last but not least, um, do not be using a crappy soldering iron. In this case, I'm outside. It's like 35 degrees. And so I'll keep this on the 200 watt setting and try to, you know, use the right amount of heat necessary, right? But, um, you know, out in the cold here, there isn't a breeze, thank goodness. You need a decent soldering iron. So pony up and get a decent soldering iron. If you try to do this like with a, a pin soldering iron, like a 60 watt or 80 watt, you're gonna have a tough time. You need at least like 120, 150 minimum. And so this baby will heat it up and we'll get it on there, so. Anyway, uh, back for the, the, the next next little segment here. And again, others may disagree with my approach here. You know, do what you think is best. And um, this is a center EHU on a DB18, and I'm just, you know, replacing the connector here. I didn't like the, the shape that it was in. It's been up for two and a half years. And it was, um, it was actually an Amphenol crimp on, and clearly I'm replacing it here with a soldering one, or, you know, a solder type. And when I put the crimp on one back on and I tightened it down with, with some plastic job pliers, I actually cracked the barrel. So here I am repairing it. So uh, next little segment coming up. Okay, I stripped the coax back right about the, the right length where the, you know, the PL259, the center part of that's gonna go in. And when I strip it back, I then take my fingers on the braid and twist it, you know, like, it, well, like what's gonna happen when I twist this on. And then as you can see, if that's focusing there, you can see I put a little flux, a little of that paste flux on the braid here. And um, you can actually put a little bit inside here too. Um, I, you know, dabbed a little bit down in there just to get it nice on that braid so that solder is gonna flow really well around the braid. And then of course we'll solder the, the center conductor last. I think that's a better focus there. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned earlier on, this comes in handy. Um, this is a DX engineering thing, or they brand it, and you can probably get them somewhere else, but this will grab the coax, and then 
I'll be putting this right over the end there. And then I'll use a pair of plastic jawed pliers um, like this to then, you know, obviously I'll, I'll hold the coax with the clamp and then I'll twist the connector on. Um, and then it'll go, you know, it'll actually kind of, as it's threaded right, it'll screw over the outer jacket and twist right down on so the, the braid is right up right up in the areas where the holes are. So I'll be doing the solder, soldering at that point. Um, soldering, if you're not in the US, we, we're lazy, solder. Um, all right, so next step. Next step done. Uh, I forgot to mention too, putting a little, a, bit, a little bit of that solder paste on actually kind of lubricates the jacket too. So it makes it easier to twist this on. So again, just, you know, clamped it with this little guy and um, then the plastic jaw pliers that I, I showed. But you can see it's twisted on. You can now see the, I've got it zoomed in here. It's actually better here. You, you can see the braid right right inside those holes there. It's a nice, clean fit. And then the next thing I'll be doing is soldering it on. And, um, you know, so the idea will be to heat it up um, a bit. And then I, I usually you know, you kind of rub back and forth as you're heating it with the solder there and let the whole connector heat up. And once that solder starts flowing, um, I should be able to get it to flow all the way around both sides without having to do both sides. Uh, so we'll see how it goes in this cold weather. So the next video, you should see the, uh, the connector actually soldered onto the braid and then we'll do the tip. So that will be coming up easy you know with the right tools a little flux um, you can see it has a nice solder flow in all the holes there I didn't have to gyrate around and twist it up and down right it was I was able to let that solder flow all the way around I just checked you know all the all the holes ooh and so there's one that isn't closed so I'll probably redo that I mean that's maybe a little bit of an overkill but I'll I'll, I'll uh, clean that one up and then on to the soldering the tip I already cut the center coax there you can see and then I'll put just a little bit of flux on there and then I'll actually when I solder the tip I'll tilt it down right I don't want that or at least level right I don't want the um, solder you know getting too crazy far back into the connector but I'll fix that one solder but you can see how it should look when it flows like that I should have checked that other side anyway the next segment coming all right I got that that other side done it you know probably not critical but I wanted to get it done right. I wiped it off. Um, you can get it to cool quicker, obviously, if you put on the barrel after it's after you're done. It'll act as a heat sink and cool it down. Um, anyway, so now on to the uh, the uh, center conductor. I'll just put a little dab of uh, flux right on the tip there, and then let that flow in, and hopefully, you'll get a nice bead right on the end there. All right, center conductor all done there. Got a nice solder there without getting too crazy you know it took some solder and with the solid center conductor it's going to use a little bit less but um, just cleaned it off and uh, now I'll uh, put the heat heat shrink tube on that I mentioned in the very first video and then we'll hook it up I'll test it and then um, I'll show some quick segments on how I seal it up using a scotch 88 and um, then the scotch um, water seal and I, I think I can show the box of that on that all right, be back. Let's see if I can uh, show the uh, heat shrink tubing. Might be a little noisy here, so get ready for this. See if I can come around this side. I'll heat it up. Underneath. You'll see that glue start to come out on the end there. Actually, you can see that I think with the 4K. There's the glue coming out there on the heat shrink too.
Yeah. Here. Shrink's all done. I put the connector on the uh, EHU here, and I'll tighten that down good and snug. With these plastic grip pliers, there. There we go. And now I'll run in and uh, make sure everything looks good. As far as, you know, make sure I didn't short that baby out. I'll just test it. I'm actually 20 meters on the ground here. Uh, it's very obvious if there's a problem. So uh, then I'll show putting on the, uh, you know, sealing it watertight. Look good in at the radio. So I'm ready to seal this up. Okay, so just to comment on this, the tape again, I mentioned at the beginning. Um, don't get crappy tape. This is Super 88. You can see it in there. Well worth the, the money, just go to Home Depot and get the good stuff. Get This is thicker, right? The, the uh, you know, not the width, but the thick of the actual tape. And so I'll, I'll use a fairly short piece and start on this side and cover all the metal up. And then I'll move, you know, with not getting too crazy, right? But then I'll switch over and use this, the, uh, the moisture sealing electrical tape over the top of the 88. So what I do with this, and again, this is just my approach. Maybe you guys do it differently. You only need a small piece because this stuff stretches. And it's nice because it's, it's not like that nasty coax seal. You can actually cut it off. So hence, you'll want to put a layer of 88 down and then put this down. I'll come down to about here, um, not getting too crazy. And then I'll go from the bottom up with another layer of 88 to you know do the final seal. And I'll... Pay attention to try to get as much seal going on, you know, up here at the top of the PL259. So I think that'll wrap it up. So I'll have a layer of 88. Then you'll see, well, I'll probably do another segment after I put this on so you can kind of see what it looks like after it's on. And then we'll finish it up. All right. One more point I wanted to make. I've, I've got the first layer down. You can see how I, I, I used like two different pieces here of this the 88 and got it tight down in on the inside of the uh, you know between the EHU housing and the 239 you know underneath there and then the 259 over the top hey a total rookie mistake do not just stretch the tape till it breaks use a pair of scissors and cut it clean and when you're stretching the tape when you finish it up ease off and let it lay down unstretched and it'll it'll stick a lot better so now I'm going on to the uh, the 2228 seal and obviously I've peeled this off you've got the you know the shiny side that's gonna be shiny side down okay um, but this stretches really well and you'll see how that goes in and I'll show that before I cover it up okay, now you can see how the 2228 moisture uh, sealing electrical tape looks and that that small piece that I had actually took it right out to where the end of the barrel connector ends. And then I used even a smaller piece to then cover that up. So now I'll start at the bottom, especially if this was hanging vertical, right? Like underneath where water's gonna come down. And I'll start at the bottom and go up with the 88 and cover all this off. So again, the beauty of all this is it's easy to cut off. Um, you know, you can unpeel the 88 or just cut off, be careful, cut it off and then just unwrap it all. And um, this, this stuff's pretty sticky, but it's nothing like that nasty coax seal. Nothing at all like it. It's, it's just so much better. So um, the next shot will be when we're done here. All right, and we're done. So hopefully that helps a few guys out or shows you what not to do. Inevitably, I'll get some, you know, guys that are not willing to make a video and put themselves out there like this. So if you have objective comments, make objective comments, otherwise they're not gonna show up. So this is how I do it. There's other ways to do it. Some guys would argue that crimping is better and or crimping and solder. In fact, all the other connectors um, are, are actually crimp connectors, but um, I decided to do this one as a solder um, style. And um, anyway, 73, and I hope to hear you on the air. And that's what it's all about is getting on the air, right? There's a lot of guys that talk, but a lot of guys that don't operate. So hope to hear you in a CW contest in particular. 73 for now, NG7M.